Hey, Pat, thanks for your time today, man. Hey, wanted to um, ask you, uh, turnovers, you guys have an eight in the last three games. Just how big will turnovers be in Saturday's game? And, and what did it mean to you on your last play on the field to get a pick on Saturday? Um, I think we coach something that Coach Grinch always uh, highlights with us is like the takeaway margin of uh, games from like the prior week in NFL games. And usually um, turnovers are kind of like the greatest indicator of wins and success. And then he even like brought up in the eight of the nine uh, conference championship that he's played in, whether it's in the Pac-12, SEC, Big 12, the takeaway margin has uh, been the one who's won the game in all eight of those nine games. So that's just something that we always practice and kind of reinforce within our defense. And then as just for the for the one last week, uh, it was a crazy moment. Um, I feel like it went too fast for me though. Uh, I kind of like didn't get to like grasp the whole moment because it kind of like happened in like a blink of an eye. Um, but it's just crazy, you know, to be able to go out my last home game um, there like that. And then as well as like it being seen, I, I'm, all my family being there and watching, um, it's like a moment that I'll cherish forever. You got an early prediction on Union Jinx in the 6A game? <laughs> I got Union by a field goal. I'm thinking like 24-21, 24-21. Oh, sounds, <laughs> sounds good. Hey, thanks for your time. Have a good Thanksgiving. Yes, sir, you too. Ryan Aver. Hey, Pat, good talking to you again. Thanks for uh, doing this. Hey, always a lot of conversation around this game about uh, sort of the uh, psychological effect of things on on Oklahoma State as far as the the uh, success that y'all have had in, in this series the other way I know obviously y'all have to prepare and, and play this game and uh, you know be ready but does it help y'all having that edge uh, confidence wise going into a, a game like this um I, I don't think so. And reason being is, you know, Coach Grinch, he's been talking to us a lot recently about our past. And uh, and a, from a book he's reading, and, you know, it says that you have to set your past on fire because at best it's a distraction and at worst it's a burden. Meaning if you're holding on to like the last play that you maybe got beat, then it's like a burden to your confidence. Or if you're holding on to like the play before we had a good play, at best it's a distraction. So that's some, been something that we've been focused on a lot as a defense, just setting our past on fire and being really present in the moment. And I think it's kind of like the same thing that we're applying to uh, th this uh, week, because obviously, you know, I've, I've had some success playing Oklahoma State, but I don't think they're the same team. Well, for a fact, they're not the same team that I played like in the previous years, if that makes sense. I think just looking at their players across the board, um, their quarterback particularly, he's having one of his best years, um, really his best year in college. Um, he's grown a lot as a player, making a lot of really good throws. Same thing with their offensive line. Running backs, a tremendous player, one of the premier running backs in college football. So I don't think we're even expecting to see, you know, the same team that we have in previous years. So we're kind of just approaching it from, you know, we got to go take it against a, a very great team, one of the top teams in the country. Is it hard to uh, get to that point of where you said, you know, set your past on fire? Um, I think I think this day and age, um, it's a little bit harder because like the social e social media element of things and things can like constantly be in your face. But like, I mean, I'm a hermit, so I mean, <laughs> maybe a little bit easier for me. But I think it's just a just a matter of like blocking out distractions, which is I think something that we always do well in terms of you know eliminating noise, whether that's through social media or whether it's even you know from our families and you know them talking to us about things and kind of just staying you know focused. And, and Coach Grinch had pointed out, you know, the Miami Heat in the, in the bubble whenever they wouldn't play in the NBA championship. And that's kind of like been our approach to things, you know, blocking out all outside noise and just focus on the people in this building. Yeah, hey, I appreciate it, Pat. Have a good Thanksgiving. You as well. John Hoover. Hey, Pat, wondering if, uh, you, you know, you've had a lot of uh, moments on the field against Oklahoma State, probably a lot of moments in the locker room against Oklahoma State. Can you share some of those, uh, some of your favorite memories, whether it's laughing or just hugging after the game or family or whatever, teammates on the field, whatever? Um, I think my favorite moment was my freshman year whenever TB had broke up the two-point conversion, I think like 48, 46 or something like that. But that was kind of just like a crazy moment for me because I wasn't really playing at the time. And then, you know, me and TB obviously go go way, way back. And, you know, seeing him make a, such a big time play in a big time game and him being like, you know, close to me kind of just inspired me for what I want to do in my future. That's probably like my most memorable moment. And then always just like after the game, you know, seeing guys I grew up with, guys I played against in high school, even played with in high school. Um, and, you know, getting to take pictures with them after, you know, just 
chopping it up and laughing a little bit and things like that. I asked, uh, I asked Lincoln if stepping up from Baylor to Iowa State to Oklahoma State uh, helps the, you know, the physicality aspect of it and the defense. And he said something about we, we have a pretty good defense that we see, a pretty physical defense that we see every day in practice. Can you describe how the, the maybe what he's talking about there, the, how you guys mix it up a couple of days a week? Uh, yeah, we do like a lot of competitive, like good versus good work um, throughout the week, whether it's through one on ones, whether it's through um, team two minute drive seven on seven. And even like, you know, these last couple of weeks, Coach Rodgers has been doing things to kind of like fuel competition. So, like, you know, one week we did like one on one pass rush, every, the whole team's around the D line, the O line, kind of just getting after it. So we kind of like breathe those moments that we would expect to see in a game. That way, you know, whenever it becomes game time, we're not really surprised by them, if that makes sense, because that's how we practice week in and week out. Um, and I think the biggest thing is like, it, it's not, it's not a week that goes by because usually if you think about it, we play every Saturday and if seven days go by before the last time you tackled or before the last time you had a really physical play, it can kind of take a moment to get back into the rhythm and things. But Coach Riley does like a great job of scheduling things. So that's simulated throughout the whole week of practice. That way we're not surprised on Saturdays. Thank you, Pat. I appreciate it. Jenny Carlson. Hey, Pat, you mentioned earlier that uh, Spencer Sanders, you've been impressed by him and he looks uh, like he's having his best year. What is it about him that has stood out on film that has caught your eye? Um, I think he's just like a dual threat quarterback, um, being able to make plays with his legs, um, whether that's through taking off and scrambling or whether that's through extending plays, getting out of sacks, um, making crazy throws on the run, accurate throws on the run. Um, I think this day and age is kind of like difficult because before, you know, you would have, you would have like just a quarterback who runs the ball or a, a traditional pocket passer. But now, you know, you see quarterbacks like Spencer Sanders who are great at doing both, um, which, you know, is difficult to game plan against his defense because, you know, we got to make sure we get him on the ground because um, he's just so great at extending plays and making plays with his legs. John Shin. Yeah, Pat, when you were in high school and when you first came to OU, this game was kind of known for nationally as just being this offensive shootout. And now kind of it looks like every sign is pointing toward the exact opposite this year. Can you kind of talk about how just how things can change over the course of four years with teams? Yeah, I think it like both of our programs have just taken off. They've got a new defensive coordinator, if I'm not mistaken, here recently in the last couple of years. And he's just done a tremendous job of, of that, you know, taking over that defense. And the same thing as well as like Coach Grinch, because I remember just go even going back to like last year, it was kind of like the same thing going into the game. Two defenses that were highly ranked um, in terms of pass defense, rush defense. And it's kind of just been like the, the culture of the team. And I think – it's kind of good because, you know, stigma around the Big 12 is like nobody plays defense. Well, now here it is that we're kind of getting recognized for playing great defense. Um, but, yeah, I think it's just like the great leadership of their program and as well as ours. Mason Young. Hey, Pat, kind of piggybacking on that a little bit. Obviously, I'm sure as an Oklahoma guy, you've seen like kind of what Bedlam means to this state as a game. Um, do you feel like it'd be strange to see Bedlam like not exist or be in kind of a different form in the future with conflict business things that are happening? Yeah, definitely, definitely. That 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 definitely be weird. I think there's probably a way that I still do it, whether it's through a non-conference game or whatever it is. But I think they definitely got to keep the tradition rolling and everything rolling because I mean that's what I grew up watching. Just you know thinking back to all over the years, all the crazy plays, the great plays that have been made. Um, most, like the one that's most of my memories, I think 2015, 16, Jordan, Jordan Thomas had like two interceptions in the game, one he returned for a touchdown. Kind of just growing up and like watching it in high school, watching, you know, Stephen Parker, Dom Alexander, Q, all the older guys above me come in and make plays. And as well as another side, you know, like Dylan Stoner on Oklahoma State and guys like that. Um, it's big to the state, you know, all, a lot of us guys from, from the state grow up watching it and, and wishing and dreaming of playing it. Okay, let's go back to John Hoover. And I'm just wondering if, if you guys win or if Baylor loses, uh, you guys will play Oklahoma State again in the championship game the following week. Have you thought about how odd that's going to feel to just play a team two weeks in a row? 
Yeah, I think, yeah, that will definitely be be a little bit weird. Um, something that we're not used to, to say the least. But I think it'll be cool, though, um, especially with the venue being changed, um, it going from an Oklahoma State game to a neutral site game. I think kind of like the environment of it changes in terms of Oklahoma State's going to be extremely hostile. And, and like, mind you, I went, <clears throat> I visited Oklahoma State. I was recruited by them. So I'm used to the paddle slapping on the boards and all that. And of course, I played there. So going from that type of environment, it's like the Cowboys Stadium, where it's completely different. Um, I think that'll be like the biggest thing that'll be different. Um, but I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to the challenge of it. Um, and I think it'll be cool. The the game planning aspect and the the whole you know this work this week. Do we try it again or do, are they going to anticipate it? That's what gets me. Is how do you outthink somebody that you just played? Um, I think with us as as a defense, we just always kind of like stick to what we do. Like you know, we stick to our guns, and that's what we're confident in. We got. Like the same defense we're running this year was the same defense I ran my first year with Coach Grinch. So I think that gives us a confidence, if that makes sense, because it's no new things. It's just us being great at what we do and us having confidence and being great at what we do. And Coach Grinch kind of always compares it to like a jump shot. Like we would never go shoot left-handed. You know what I mean? Or I mean, some guys be a little bit more skilled like me. <laughs> you can shoot left-handed. But, you know, most guys, you know, you're going to stick to your jumper and avoid the fadeaways and the and you know the crazy jump shots if you can. Um, but that's kind of our approach to things. Thank you, Pat. I appreciate it. Good luck. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's all the questions we have for Pat. Thank you.